Hi YouTubers, 4Clicky45 LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone. And tonight's topic is Mike Reyes had a question, and that is he wants to buy some pure lead bars from Rotometals to cast bullets and slugs and this kind of thing with. But he's concerned because there are a couple of reviews that he read where the reviewers stated that they got some of these bars from Rotometals and when they casted their bullets for their black powder they only got three and a half pounds of bullets out of a bar a five pound bar and the rest was slag and dirt actual dirt so they had one and a half pounds of dirt and slag and three and a half pounds of lead and they're, they're complaining because that's a ripoff no one wants to buy a bar that has 30% dirt and slag in there. So anyway, I, I understand what Mike Reyes is coming from because he's concerned. Well, here are a couple of bars of super hard alloy from Rotometals. And I'd like you to look at this. Experienced casters know that we actually make ingots before we cast our bullets, these happen to be range scrap. And the whole idea is you got dirty lead and you convert the dirty lead to clean lead ingots. Well, what is a lead ingot? But it's nothing more than a smaller bar. Or a bar it just happens to be a big ingot. So we're doing the same thing that Rotometals is doing. Cleaning lead alloys to be make, made into bullets the only difference is when we buy it from Rotometals we're getting a designated alloy that is already mixed for us ready for us to go ahead and make bullets with whether it be a harder alloy for rifle bullets or a softer alloy for target pistol bullets or whether it's pure lead for shotgun slugs Rotometals does the work for us in mixing the alloys and cleaning them up so that it would be a disturbance if we bought the, the bars from Rotometals and they weren't clean. So Mike, think about this for a little, little while and, and imagine that these are bars of pure lead from Rotometals. Now when, when we cast an ingot into our, our ingot molds, Rotometals cast these out of their molds, which are long, and this is the inside of the mold, and this is the surface that they pour that's not against the mold, this surface right here. Well, you know that when you, when you pour and melt lead, that any dirt and impurities will float to the top. So just imagine if this, if this were one-third slag and dirt, what this bar would look like when we bought it. And that, that is, it would be a bar of lead, and the top would have all this crud, and it wouldn't have any kind of texture. It, there'd be dirt and crud, and you could see the slag on there. And if you want to do that, you could just simply melt some of our, our dirty lead, and instead of cleaning it and skimming it like we normally do, we just go ahead and just cast it, dirt and all, into our, our ingot mold, and we would get a dirty ingot. And you could tell. And it's, there's very difficult to have a, a bar that has 30% slag and dirt in there, and it's going to come on looking like this. It's going to look like a dirty bar. As experienced casters, we know what that would look like. And, and we wouldn't want that because we cast our, our little ingots like this. And Rotomills cast arrows like this. Now, this turns out that super hard is 30% antimony. And antimony has a crystalline structure in, in the alloy. So that little wonder that this surface here looks a little grainy because of the 30% antimony. If we had a bar of linotype, then it would be a lot smoother like this on top. Or it would even look like it would even look like this. Because the crystalline structure 
without the 30% antimony would, it would be a lot smoother. But this is, this is understandable. This is not dirt. This is a crystalline structure of, of a 30% antimony. And it's clean. If you look at that, that's clean. So, to test this properly, I took a bar and melted it. And you'll see what we did coming up. So YouTubers, it's very important to take your test pot and scrape all the slag and dirt off of the sides of it first. Because if you don't, then any ingot or five pound bar you melt in there will have a lot of slag and dirt getting into the mix that wasn't the fault of the bar in the first place. So let's make sure we scrape the sides real well and get that dirt out of there. So you see that dirt in there? There's more. There's more dirt on the sides of that. So YouTubers, we dumped that slag and now you see there's more dirt in there. So that if we take that and let's do a fair test for that ingot. So YouTubers, we got the heat turned up and the pot's fairly clean but there's still a little dirt in that pot. So there's going to be some dirt from the pot getting into that ingot, into that bar when it's melted. But we'll allow for that. Notice again, that bar is pretty clean bar. So let's see how much slag comes out of this. And certainly if you buy pure lead from Rotometals, your pure lead should look somewhat like this bar. It shouldn't look like it's all dirty and there's all kinds of stuff incorporated into it. So YouTubers, there you go. That's the melt. Now, we learned something tonight and that is that super hard alloy is not easy to melt. It took quite a bit of melting, more than, than regular lead alloys to melt that. So see how much slag do we have there. We have some impurities, but there's not a lot of slag. Certainly not a lot of dirt. So that's pretty pure, actually. Let me go ahead and pour this. Now, Mike, that bar of super hard alloy that we started with, we, we actually used some of that to do some casting with, so it wasn't a full five pound bar. As you remember, the bar had, a, had some melted off the end of it. So we went ahead and casted that bar, and this is one of them. This looks pretty clean. As you know, as you saw, we melted that, and then made it into these ingots of the super hard. And here are the three that we casted from that bar, and it comes to almost four pounds. Well, we easily melted about a pound off the end of that bar. So this is about right. And for sure we don't have 30% lead and slag in there. Now Mike, very interesting. When these casts, the super hard alloy does a funny thing when it sets. And so all of our three that we casted with the super hard had this funny condensation inside the mold. I think my mold was a little bit too cold and when rotometals cast they make sure they have hot molds so they don't get this problem. But this is what came out of our super hard casting with our mold. When we cast with regular rain scrap we don't get that that compression dimple in the inside the mold like we get with a super hard but that's probably a property of the super hard. Finally Mike let's take one of these super hard bars is supposed to be five pounds. Let's see what we were getting there. Notice again, very clean, very clean bar. And that's pretty close to five pounds. So maybe we're getting two or three or four ounces less, but I think that that's okay. That's five pounds is good, good in my book. 
So, uh, so Mike, I don't know what to tell you except except that I'm sure those reviewers were was an honest review on their part, but I don't I don't have any problems with Roto Metals. They haven't shown me that that they're giving me a lot of slag and dirt in their ingots so far in their bars. So until they do, I don't have any problem with them. YouTubers out there, take care. We'll see you again on the next video. Bye for now.